man, I'm excited about this episode of the Elite Recruiter Podcast. But before we get started, the book of the month, Relentless by Tim Grover. Secondly, the Recruiting Growth Summit. Make sure you sign up. It is free. It is going to be an absolute game changer. I have the link in the comments. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. All right. Enjoy this episode. I am excited about this episode of the Elite Recruiter Podcast. I have the one, the only, the staffing shark with me today, Richard Rosner, to talk about a few things. One, how to develop yourself to be the best damn recruiter out there. Secondly, how do you create a brand that candidates going to start coming to you? And third, he's launching something called Recruiter TV. So we're, we'll talk about that towards the end, but like, welcome to the podcast, Staffing Shark. Hey, brother Ben, what's up, buddy? Doing good, man. Doing good. Happy you're here. Oh, man, I'm ready, man. Lots of good going on in 2024. I just got to tell you, man, it's an exciting freaking year. I, you know, after last year, which, you know, a lot of recruiters, it was a pure chaos last year. I think this year is going to be the absolute best year for everybody. You know what? Can I tell you real quick? 23 was my Fire. best year ever in 10 years. Because guess what? When everybody was panicking, guess what the shark was doing? Just hunting everything down. <laughs> I love when it's panic. So hopefully 24 is going to be better. But for the shark, it's like, I love it, man. I think this year with everything that's going on, we're going to talk about everything, the AI and everything. It's coming at us so quick. And as you know, I'm hyped up all the time anyway. So this is great stuff. <laughs> well, before, okay, two things. How did you get into recruiting? And then after that, where the hell did the staffing shark come from? Oh, okay. How long do you have? Okay. So good stuff here. So actually I used to be a probation officer, believe it or not, for 10 years for the state of Pennsylvania. And one day I'm going to tell everybody out there, I just only quit, Ben. I just said, I'm out. You know, take my vacation, went to Pittsburgh and had no job for three weeks and landed in the staffing industry. Just like that. Somebody called me. Actually, it was a sales job for like insurance. And the guy liked me so much. And he's like, Hey, you just want to work for a staffing firm? Back in 2014, he's only been in business for 10 years. And he said, do you want New York City for half the time and half the time in Pittsburgh? The room's paid for. I'll be your roommate. This older gentleman. And he's like, dude, just listen to me. Like Rocky Balboa, I swear to God. He's like, can you just listen to me for a year? You'll be a rock star. So I give him all the shout outs, man. And so when and so recruiting is your second career, you were a probation officer. You just said, F it, quit your job. Yep. Found a recruiting job. Like when you were looking for somebody else and you even lived with the guy too. We had a room in the back. Yep. So I talk about a complete like 360 life change into the recruiting world. It is. And you know what? I got to tell everybody, I don't have a job, man. This is a lifestyle, man. I mean, I tell anybody, go back and do probation work, man. That's a job. Every day, get shot at, bit at, stuff like that. But no, this is so much fun. And uh, yeah, love it. 10 years of just excitement. And the next 10 years are going to be more exciting than you. That is awesome. Okay, so like where'd the staffing shark come from? Oh man, this is great. So, okay, so I can't make this up. I'm sitting on the beach one day and I'm like, you know, I used to be a wedding DJ. So I've done everything and seriously, I've done everything. Wedding DJ, personal trainer, I'm still, man, I don't stop, man. I just grab it off, you know? Like Gary V always says, just grab it off. So I'm like, okay, I'm Richard Roser. I've been in the industry for about six years now. Worked at three different companies, you know, you know, and I'm like, something to build my brain. What's going to make me different? I go to these conferences and people's like, hey, Richard, how are you doing? I'm thinking, that's great, but that's not what I want to be. I want to be this person where it's like I can bring energy to everybody. And everybody thought that before, but I'm like, so I'm sitting on a beach here one day, Murray Beach, ain't gonna lie. I'm sitting there and I'm just saying, okay, what can make me the next level? So first I'm drinking a land shark, of course, you know, so I'm sitting there, I can't make this up. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the waves and, you know, it's, about five o'clock and I'm thinking, I need something to get me going. I'm thinking staffing, staffing. And I looked and I thought I seen a shark, but it was a wave. So I was like, staffing shark, always in a hut, never sleeps and drink land shark beer. Boom. Five minutes later, LLC, here we are. Four years later. <laughs> oh. awesome. And then I took to the next level. I said, you know what? I'm going to make it like a Kenny Chesney with flip flops, medium shirt, shark necklace. And bring energy to everybody like Kenny does, you know, and have that beach vibe for recruiting. And here I am. And first of all, if you've had not had the chance to meet the staffing shark, like he is a, a, a keynote speaker at all sorts of recruiting events. Like he literally just like, well, you get done with t listening to him and you just walk away with just like so much energy and you're ready just to attack the phones or attack the email. Hey, thank you. For that. You know what? It's not about that. I just want everybody to enjoy. I always say when you speak, 
This is the big tip I'm going to give everybody. Don't go around worry about yourself. Worry about the audience. I bring like the concert attitude. When they get off, at the end of the day, they want to take pictures with me, have fun with it. They're like, holy cow, because we want them to get something out of it. You know, we could tell them all the info that we think is good, but then they ask questions, get them involved. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff. So, okay. You, you created the staffing chart to kind of like just set yourself apart. Cause what, how many recruiters are there in the U S was it 229,000 mm -hmm. recruiters, 300,000 recruiters. And like you had to create a brand to be different. And because of the brand, you've also had people coming to you. You like talk about, first of all, building a brand and then building a brand that like where candidates and clients come to you. Well, here's the thing is, uh, you got to think what you want to be. So at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, I'm not asking everybody to have energy like the shark or something like that. I have one person I mentor. She's the redhead recruiter. So feed off what you like. It don't have to even be a key name, man. It could be just anything in general. But once you get it rolling, put the taglines out there. As you can see, the content we're going to talk about on social media. I never say anything about hiring. I just put this entertainment, excite, engage, employee is my motto. You know what I mean? And when you build that, I mean, with QR codes everywhere, restaurants and bars, you go around here, they got, you know, get hired by the shark with a QR code, goes right to my Facebook instead of my website. So guess what? I'm chatting with them on the way home. Stuff like that is going to build your brand. Every time you're out, if it's a restaurant or vacation, you're always on the hunt. We're not working. It's a lifestyle. And when you build that brand, they're going to come to you. If you hear some of the voicemails I get, it's like, hey, shark, you got another bite. I swear to God, this happens every week. Like, they don't even know me and they put energy in. And this is not even light industrial. This could be an engineer. This could be a nurse. As soon as they get on the phone with me, even if they don't talk to me, they leave a voicemail. It's so high energy. I mean, seriously, one day I'm going to do a blog on this. But that's the vibe that I give everybody is hope to get a job, you know? And if I can't find them a job, that's why that tagline is jobs for all. That's because I'll refer them to you my friends on LinkedIn and stuff like that and ask for nothing to return. So at the end of the day, you know, if I can't find you something, I'm going to pass you off. And I think that's how you build a community of people that love you. Well, and real quick, you just mentioned one thing earlier, like you're talking about restaurants, you're talking about stuff like locally. And I, you know, you've done something that I've seen very ref few recruiters do is you've completely dominated your local market. Exactly. And you know what's funny? Go ahead. The place I'm in West Virginia here, I've only been here for two and a half years. And I took it Wait, over. what? Two and a half years. And I took this market over. I had the market in Pittsburgh. Now I went here with a contract down here. Two and a half years. There's four other staffing firms. And we have 80% of the market share. I mean, that's just what I do is like, I go in and I just go in like a shark. I mean, I'm everywhere all night long. If it's a chamber event or something like that, you know, and I love it because here's the one key I'm going to tell everybody. Everybody says, oh, you got a business card. I'm like, scam me right now. There's my QR codes. Boom. Scan a shark? Yeah, there it is. So it's uh, comical stuff like that. will build your brand. And then guess what? The big thing I always say is social media. I mean, we have CRMs. As you probably heard me before, my CRM is my Facebook. Everybody I get hired is my Facebook friend. So then I can say happy birthday, Merry Christmas. And guess what? They refer all their friends too because everybody's friends and friends. So you build that database of 1,500 people in like two years. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, Okay, one more time. You, two years ago, two and a half years ago, you moved from Pennsylvania, Pits uh, Pittsburgh. To West Virginia. Yep. To West Virginia. So how many, how many people did you know in, in, that, in West Virginia, that area before you moved? Um, in the area, probably about five people. Okay, so you knew five people. Mm -hmm. You've already taken over the complete market and everybody like knows you. You've completely, like, I'm just going to say this again. You've taken over that local market. For a recruiter that wants to do that and... Two years is like an incredible time to do that. How do you take over a local market? Like, what are the things that you're doing on a weekly basis that you've pushed everybody out? I think the big thing is content. You got to put content out there they enjoy. As you can see, I put weather reports. I share everything in the community. So people really know, much know me all the bad. If there's snow report, I'm doing a snow report. So I think that's what we need to do. That stuff sitting behind a desk and just calling candidates, that's great, but you got to get on the field. I always say on the streets, podcasting as we're doing right now. I recommend everybody, you know that in 2024, you should have a podcast. Everybody does. I mean, seriously, that's stuff. Do short clips. But I think the big tip I can give everybody, it's not about you. If you see any of my videos, a lot of them, I have people in them. I have candidates in them. I have people in them. They need to have that. You need to have substance around you. Just talking about yourself all the time about stories. That's not what it's about. It's about them. 
And when you think that way and you put, want to put them in the spotlight, you know, like, like the big thing is everybody gets hired by me to get the shark shake, get a handshake with me. I push it on my site. They push it on theirs. There it is. These are simple things that I've talked over and over when I speak that a lot of people don't do. And they're like, and then when they start doing like shark, I'm getting so much leverage now that the other staffing firms are calling me saying, can you slow down? You know? And I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was at a, I was at a restaurant. I gotta tell you this real quick story. I'm at a restaurant about a year ago and this girl looks over and she's with her fiance and she's like, OMG, you're the shark, aren't you? My owner, my staffing firm said, when are you leaving town? I never met her before in my life. And then actually she bought me a shot. We like laughed about it and stuff like that. She's like, you're everywhere. We can never figure out what you actually do because you're everywhere. And I said, that's the key about it. Keeping all my, you know, competitors, which are not my competitors on the defense side. That is phenomenal. <laughs> and it's, it's the one thing I actually, cause I've, I've followed the shark for a few years now on, on Facebook and I know the LinkedIn content, like a lot of people are sharing what they're doing and sharing their high mm -hmm. success, higher success stories. And at least in my, my space, I, I barely see anybody. Welcome to government contract, but the shark has a picture with almost every single person he hires. Every single, like it literally feels like on a daily basis or like multiple times a week, he's just like, new hire, new hire, new hire, new hire, new hire. <laughs> it is. And you know what's fun about it? It's excitement too. I'm mm -hmm. going to take it to the next level. When I interview people, I got my flip flops on in the office, you know, my ripped jeans. Dude, I just bring that vibe to them. Hey, come on in. And you know what? Right off the bat is the best thing I ever tell me. I don't recruit you. When I recruit you, guess what? You're just going to get fall, fall off. Guess what I am? Your job agent. I represent you. And when you say that, you know how many phones I ask them? They have my name, Shark, job agent. That's what they put in there. So guess who they're going to call every time they need a job? And then guess what? You want to keep them in your life cycle the whole time. So if they quit jobs or they rotate every three years, guess who they're calling again? You got that okay. a continuing that ocean of opportunity. So how do you manage like all this social media stuff with the work of recruiting too? Um, there's a lot of different platforms out there. You know, you got, you know, you got, um, hero posts and all that stuff. So I always say, and I'm sure you do the same thing too, is don't push everything out yourself. Set it up there. I got stuff ready for February already. So you know what I mean? So push that content out there. One thing I will say that I love to say right now, um, all the content is myself. I don't have anybody else doing it. So my feelings for the day are me. You know, I love AI. Some of the stuff in AI, if you've seen it now, you know, I'm doing like Terminator stuff and with music. People are responding to that. As long as you have your tagline at the end of your logo, they keep seeing that over and over again. You're building that brand, man, just like Nike. We don't buy because of the shoes. Air Jordans, we buy because of the name, you know? They could be the ugliest Air Jordans, but we're like, hey, we got to get them. So if you can build that in recruiting to build your name, that's it's all about. So and here's, a, here's actually a kind of a, a fun question going about building your brand. You know, a lot of people are working at a company or working at a staffing agency, and they're afraid to like really just focus on their brand because of the business brand versus this, like, mm -hmm. like how do you navigate like a, working at a company while still building your own brand? You have to go in then, uh, you know, the, the company I work with, you know, with the contract is actually, I say, Hey, I'm building my brand, but my brand is going to build your brand. Does that make sense? Okay. And I think a lot of companies, if I can tell you any tips out there, please let your recruiters and your sales reps build their brand too. Just don't box them out. And that's why I do my own thing now, because the big staffing firms, they're limited in the recruiters, what they can do on social media and everything. They're holding them back. Let them beat a Tom Brady and throw it in the end zone. It's going to benefit yeah, everybody at the end. I saw, I think I saw this like two months ago, somebody in one of the Facebook groups talking about, they were looking at a job opportunity and the place that they were looking at, like they wanted to control all their LinkedIn posts. Oh. Is that crazy? And you know what? I used to work for a big staffing firm. Not going to mention the name, you know, but in light industrial day-to-day -day labor, that's why I got silver in my hair. I joke about it all the time. I mean, you do that day-to-day -day labor stuff. Cool. You do anything. But end of the day, I had all these ideas maybe six years ago. Guess what? Can't do it. Can't do it. You got to get approved by marketing, which takes two weeks. I'm like, and, you know, and, and I'm thinking, I'm going to build your brand and make you more money, which, and then guess what? If you don't do that, most recruiters are going to bounce. You know, they want that creativity. They want you. I think a lot of companies, if we uh, want to steer this way a little bit, like the leadership stuff, they don't talk to the recruiters much. The recruiters are your front line. The sources are recruiters. Everyone's on the phone. Every week you should give their opinions, you know? Mm, absolutely on that. Okay. So like, it, take a few steps back. You know, 
2024, right? I would say 2022, a lot of recruiters, I don't want to say this, but started learning bad habits. Mm -hmm. You know, 2023 was a wake up call for many recruiters. And while you are on the attack, you know, when you're working and developing yourself to make sure that you're a good recruiter, like you got work, you build content, like what are all the fundamentals, pillars that a recruiter needs to focus on to win in 2024? I think recruiters need to get, you know, it, it's social again. You know, we got to get back to the, the communication part. I think so many times we just post stuff on LinkedIn or Indeed, post and pray. And that's not happening anymore because we need candidates and we need sales too. So I think the big pillars when you go in, first off is, oh, you know, you need to communicate with the, the candidate. Second thing is the candidate and the recruiter are equal. You, you can't talk down to them. You know, without them, you don't have a job. Without them, they don't have a job. If you tell them that right off the bat, dude, there's that barrier you're breaking with anybody. And, and I think the thing is, though, you have to learn the ATS system you're operating, you know, the AI. You have to do that in and out. When I go to these staffing firms and I help them out, the first thing is their ATS is they're not using them. And they're using them about 10%. There's so many different things they don't know. And they've been in the industry for five years. I'm thinking, oh my God, let me tweak this for you. And then the owner is like, well, we didn't know about that either. I'm thinking, in two weeks, I can change, like, or rescue. I can change any recruiter and make you a recruiter rescue, make you a, a celebrity again. Seriously. And that's, that's what I do. I go around now to staffing firms and just build that culture up. So the fundamentals about that, the ATS. And then I think the thing is, though, you have to organize yourself. I think too many people are just all over the board. They're just grabbing the first position. I think that whoever the manager is, you have to say, you're going to focus on these five opportunities and then we're going to go something else or do a team effort. But I think there's too much chaos and everybody's just grabbing the easy stuff. And then the hard ones are left alone. And guess what? The client isn't getting called and the candidate's not getting called. And guess what? They're all upset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you definitely hit some points there. So, oh, okay. so I feel like this is, should be part of staffing TV, recruiter rescue. It is. Are, are you actually going to be making episodes? I am working year? on something. Trust me. Yeah, yep. It's behind the scenes. This here is a lot of media stuff going on, but yeah, because I think that's something that we lack in our industry is uh, we just do the podcasting and, you know, I'm bringing the energy to it. So we got some great things coming up, but yeah, that recruiter rescue, I came up, I was watching Bar Rescue about a year ago and I was like, why don't we just do recruiter rescue? I go in and just save the day, three weeks. Well, and that kind of goes into, I mean, it's something that I've been trying to figure out is, you know, all these different industries have really mastered uh, video and mastered so uh, social media. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to like recruiting, like, you know, I've, I have those podcasts, like people come and listen to the podcast, they watch the podcast, but how do you like really take things up a notch and real quick pause. I recommend everybody to have a podcast because it is going to be the authentic voice in 2024 with verse, like when so much stuff is going to be artificial intelligence, but like you see real estate, you see this, you see that. How do we level up our video content? I think the big thing is we just have to study the other industries. Netflix, Chick-fil-A, the way they do it, like, you're laughing at this, but real quick, Chick-fil-A, their model, if you, if you do that in recruiting and staffing, you're going to crush it. What's the first thing they do? Chick-fil-A real quick. You meet a person, right? Human connection. Oh, yeah. You go up to the drive-thru, right? You don't do it you're anywhere straight. else. Is that great? And they, people keep coming back over and over again. They make it so easy. It's like that bull. And they're closed on Sundays too. So if you could use that format, just bouncing around a little bit, but that's that Chick Fil A format I use all the time. But like Netflix and you know all the streaming services, that's what we have to do to up ourselves in recruiting for the videos. I think the videos I'm going to be up blunt. I think some of them are horrible. I, I think sixty percent of the content out there in staffing recruitings. I got a hundred jobs. I see this all the time, and it bites. I just want to call them up and say, "Hey, I have a hundred jobs. Come on down. We got we're going to hire you today and next week. We have 150." In my eyes, I'm thinking, "Do you hire anybody yet?" Because you said a fifty more. I mean, people don't want that. Or the postings of, we have 60 jobs, welder, this, pain that. You got to make it creative and you got to make it short. You know, short videos is the way to go. You know, that 15, 20 second pop. You know, if it's a, if it's a race car going down the road that we can hire you for a mechanic, boom. And then at the end, boom, a blast of energy of your logo. That's going to get you there. I mean, I think it's that creativity. Well, a quick 30 seconds. What tools are you using for short form videos that you can recommend for recruiters to use? Because like video is tough. Oh, there's so many of them. You know what? Um, I'll give you a list after this. I mean, I got like eight of them. So, you know, okay. so, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll for, the, for the listeners, I'll, I'll put that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But there's a lot of cool ones out there. I mean, you could do like for Christmas or St. Patty's Day or stuff like that. You, you got to be creative. 
One thing else when you do content, follow the holidays. Valentine's Day is coming up. Hit it up with some good stuff there. You know, Super Bowl should be posted during Super Bowl. Everybody's got their phone during the holidays and people's not posting. Super Bowl Sunday, I would blow that up with content. Mm. And the one thing I also like, I, I'm going to ask you this content, and we, we've asked it before. Mm -hmm. The content has turned into business for you. Like you have seen real financial results from the content you've been creating. 100%. I mean, we're talking 300%. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, and it's the, it's the creative content of me being, you know, with cartoon characters of myself and, you know, stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually looking like a, an action hero and stuff. That's what is engaging people. You get one, two people engaged. And guess what? It goes viral to the next level for somebody else. And the reason I know this is because I ask everybody, how'd you find me? Like, dude, you're, you're the crazy shark on the, on the lot. On, on, I want to work with you because I feel the energy. That's the first thing they say. And I said, what did you, which video did you see? And I did a study on this of which ones they you know, showed. So if it's me just doing something, you know, just a regular podcast, which I usually never do by myself, uh, the algorithm and that stuff's not going to go. But if I do something where I'm pouring down in the snow at 5 a.m., they love it. Yeah, and because I think that's one fear that a lot of recruiters have is like, the amount of effort it takes to create content, like where, how am I going to see the financial results? And, and, you know, using you as an example, you've done a good job taking over this town, this city in West Virginia. And, you know, it's mostly just because of the content. And there are so many content creators out there that are making nothing, but you've turned this into financial rewards. 100%. And sharing is caring. Here, here I go, right here. So here's another great one. So I go to right. restaurants, I do a review. 20 seconds, maybe two minutes, you know, of, you know, their cookies or their coffee. Guess what? I post that. I did it during the holidays. I'm going to do some blogs on that. Guess what? They post it when they have 7,000 followers. They're going to see you, your logo, and everything else. It's a win-win. Well, so why would you go to every restaurant or a pub or a winery or any yeah. business in your area? That's so free advertising for them. You're creating the content about your, your life, but you're making sure that your logo is at the end of everything. Logo and everything. And my logo changes colors, you can see. I mean, it'll be green for St. Patty's Day. So, you know, I, I keep it. People like that stuff. Different colors, different things coming in and out. You know, you ride the vibe. Because I, I think that's what like, you're doing. Because like, at least for me personally, like, I make a lot of like, it's very sector, it's sectioned off, like the Elite Recruiter Podcast content, like some of the GovCon content. And I, like, I should have logo, whether elite recruiter podcast or, you know, select source solutions at the end of everything I'm doing that, even if it's going out to a wine bar, bouncing around France. Trust me, when I'm with my family and I put a picture out there, seven sharks at the bottom. That's what it is. It's like when they were right. out for the holidays in California, I was putting the logo out there because that's, that's initiating that you're with your family. You know what I mean? We always want to go back and building a brand. You know, they see you out there at Texas Roadhouse or wherever you're at. They're like, well, he's a family person too. See, that's. Get that on everything. Because uh, I, I think Gary Vee said it or a few other like, content creators have said it. Like, you know, you need to start sharing more about like your life. Exactly. But you include everybody in your life. I always say ocean of opportunities. As I said that earlier, that's what it is. It's an ocean opportunity for everybody. Businesses, myself, I'm the core and everybody else, I'm just going to push you out there. And when you think like that, to put everybody else in the spotlight, dude, you're yeah. never recruiting again, really. You're never even getting sales again. I mean, you, they're just going to come to you. Okay, so jumping back over to Recruiter Bar Rescue. Yes. You like that. You pick, <laughs> I, I, I like this. So you pick up a firm. Let's just say you meet a firm that's been either going backwards or has been staying stagnant. What are the first three things that you're doing with that organization to help them turn everything around? I, I think the first thing is when I walk in, um, and I did this in West Virginia, I walk in and I see how it is. Cubicles, get rid of them. You know, we, we got to bring the vibes. So first thing is, oh, we got to have music. You go to Walmart, you go to Target, they play music, Ben. Why do they play that music? They don't play that for you to sing. They play for that so you'd be happy, smile, so you can buy more stuff. Same thing. So that's, it's a motion thing. So actually I have music playing there. If it's country or if it's, you know, Pitbull or whatever like that, up a little notch, you want to make it, when they walk in, they're like, holy cow. I throw a Pac-Man machine in this Pac-Man machine because that's my favorite. You pick what you want. Hey, we got video games in there. Maybe a, you know, a ping pong table. You know, we keep it open, you know, bright lights, you know, there's no tech team going on right off the bat. It's when you come in, you're going to see a fresh, whatever you want. At my desk, I have a lava lamp with a shark on it. You come in like, what can I help you with? You know, it's like, like well, come on here. What do you want? I don't interview anybody. It's a beer chat, coffee chat. 
that gets me to the next level right there because that's what I'm talking about. You know, I'm talking about them. We're not going to interview you right off the bat. There's no interview. You know, it's like if you're going on a date or something like that, it's the first time you meet somebody. You're not going to quiz them on everything, are you? So why would you just get to meet them, right? Just get to meet and see what they want. They might not be a fit, but you know, if they're not, that's okay. You can pass them off. And you no, know, if I get them hired, hey, I'll pull a land shark out and drink with them. You only get one because two don't get a DUI. So, but, but, but that's kind of funny too, because they're like, dude, I've never had this experience in my life. And I'm telling you, just the way I create this with the other recruiters that come in and are like, wow, this was stagnant. Now you come in and plus we have fun with it too. I mean, we're throwing stress balls at each other during the day. We, we have fun with this. That's what I'm saying. It's a lifestyle. So when I go into an office, I want everybody to be loved, felt like they, they're the number one thing. I also quiz them about what do they like sourcing? I've flipped people from sourcing to sales because that's what they like better. It's like football. Like I used to be a football coach too. So it's like plug and play. It's like, where should you put that person? And it's amazing how these staffing firms are like, well, we've never done that. We just have a boring meeting once a week. Oh, let's go through your recs. We're not doing that. We're going to have it fun. And they do it during the worst time. They do like a Monday at nine o'clock when it's like, dude, we should be hitting that pavement right now. Right? I mean, yeah. And then another thing I always say is on Fridays, I mean, I hate to say this, but Fridays rotate Friday at noon, you're done for the day. You know, you're still getting paid till five o'clock. Get out of here. You know, that's work culture. And that's what people love. So you, you're changing the culture. Like you're, you're working on really changing the environment. And, you know, there's plenty of studies out there that talk about the environment being like high producers. Like, are you doing every, anything when it comes to like the KPIs or the work ethic or the like basics? Yes. The, the KPIs, we push that back a little bit and I do like a BMI body mass index. I call it like now. So it's a, you know, it's a, you know, seriously. What is your lean muscle mass? You know, what is your lean energy here to get the, uh, the candidates and stuff like that? So I have a formula for that and it's a lot better. That KPI name, I ain't gonna lie, freaking hate it. Everybody cringes on that. When they hear KPI, people feel like they're going to the principal's office. I talk to these recruiters like, oh, my KPI, I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get what I needed to this month. I think we have to make it more relaxed. And one, something else I like to do, I mean, this is a flip in a coin is, why don't we just do a group effort for the commissions? You know, everybody works together. You throw it in a pot, you know, you have that weakest link. It's like a team effort. That weakest link is going to go and jump in and guarantee is going to be a rock star after a while, or it's going to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. Like the top five in basketball, they all play together. They win together, right? Why would you have that? Why would you have just one superstar and four people struggling? So w when you are talking about kind of like a group commission, is it like everything's a group commission or is it like? there's still like personal commission and then part of it's group commission. The contract work would be group commissions, but then yeah. if it's a direct hire, if that's on you, yeah, have to touch down for yourself. Okay, cool, cool. So you're like, you're really just coming in and completely changing things. And like, I know oh, it is. And I, you know, I come in the first day and we meet, we're going to have, I bring cases of beer with me. I'm like, hey, we're going to drink right off the bat. Let's, let's go. We're going to have fun with this. We're going to go out to dinner. We're not going to talk about anything the first time I get there. We're going to have dinner and we're going to get to know you're going to get to know me. And they usually know who I am already. And they're like, we're so excited you're here. So they're already, they're buying into my system. And I think that's the big thing. You have to buy into the system. Okay. If I had double digit growth for 10 years. I've been in staffing. Then I'm, I'm doing something right. You know, it's like, it's not hard. This is a people person business. I really treat it like probation a little bit. It's like, you know, we are like a social worker for our candidates. And when you treat it like that, everything else is so simple. Okay. So you've, like just for backtracking for the listeners, so you've you've come in, you've completely changed the culture, you're, you've changed a little bit the, like the the way the structure of the, how everything works. Um, to, I, I know you're probably not using the word KPI, but like work ethic. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for this excitement and this change to really like see the financial results in the recruiters' pockets? I would say realistically, uh, we could do it in two months. Easy. Okay. Easy. Two months. Yep. So you, a, a, and, this, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because like 2023 for certain sectors has been freaking horrible. Mm -hmm. Other sectors, it's been, you know, blockbuster. But, and I know it's hard to turn a bus or to turn a car, to turn an organization, but you can have an organization make a t complete 180 towards positive financial benefits in about two months. Two months to three months. 
And that's the mindset too. I mean, it's with me with them all the time, you know, and, uh, you know, it's about praising people, placements and praising, you know, you get a placement. What do you do? You give a high five. I'm going to lie dude. When I get a deal placement, or if I'm closing a deal, I'm doing a Ray Lewis dance. I'm seriously, I'm going to try to do a backflip. I mean, jumping over a chair. That's the excitement I get. So when they see me do that right off the bat, because usually when I go into these staffing firms, I'm like, I'm going to control your, uh, your business development. I'm going to, I'm going to crush it. I mean, in 18 months in West Virginia, I did 38 clients in 18 months and that's doing everything else too. That's the platforms, everything else. So if I can get 38 clients myself for a staffing firm in 18 months, damn, somebody that's doing this full time could do 40 or 50 if they use the, my concept. Okay. So real quick, we'll pause and we'll jump into something else after this. So one of the things that you do for recruiting bar rescue, you also actually pound the phones there, get new clients. Pound and make placements. But you know what? You'll love this. Of all 38, met one in person. It was all over the phone. The, my voice tone, how I talked to him off the bat. I don't even talk about staffing. I'm not, I'm not selling bodies. That's another different uh, topic we talk about some other day. I'm here to just communicate with you, BS with you. First thing is, oh, you see what staffing firms are in your area. The, the real dip is you see what's in your area. Then you just attack that. You know, you take, take, I mean, they post all the jobs there. You know what that is. So you use all them. And guess what the first thing they always say? Here's my tip. I'm going to tell everybody and it works all the time. They're like, okay, staffing firm gets the contract and they never call me back because they don't want to fill it. You know, it's like maybe it's a hard one or if they do, they bounce around three recruiters. So if service is number one thing. So guess what I do? I'm like, I'm like what? what makes you different? Here's my cell phone. You text me or call me on the weekend, Friday or Saturday night. You might be watching your football. Within 20 minutes, I'm going to get back to you. Guess what? The hiring manager sent it. And they'll send me a text, yo, Shark, right back there. Damn, you were right. I think you got my personal phone number. When are we going to get the contract? They'll say Monday morning in your mailbox. So stuff okay. like that is, people don't think of that, but that's the simple things that, you know, they, they want. Service is the number one thing I hear out there everywhere. The service and staffing sucks. When we say ghost in Canada's ghost, recruiters ghost a lot too. Almost probably 50%. Mm. Or salespeople mm. too. Okay, so before we go go further, is there anything else that you want to share about recruiting Bar Rescue, uh, developing yourself as a recruiter, and, or branding yourself? I think the biggest thing I can just wrap it up with is just uh, if you're going to brand yourself, you know, think outside the box. Think about the community first. Community branding is the most important thing. I mean, if you're nationwide, just take small steps. And call yourself, you know, the influencer. You know, that's what I call myself, you know, a micro-influencer recruiter. I think that's what we have to have in every branch, which, you know, we could jump in that a little bit down the road. Instead of marketing, a marketing department, that's great to have a nationwide marketing department. But if you have somebody in your office that's a micro-influencer recruiter, they actually recruit, but they also influence and do the marketing. Because what I see, and I get in there, I hate to say marketing companies sometimes, they're here and the recruiter's here. They're putting out content that's not even related to the Canada because they're in the marketing vibes. But when you get somebody that's down like us that recruit every day, they're going to tell you what the marketing part should be, right? And you got Canva and you got all this stuff now you can use. I mean, you could be a genius in no time. Awesome. And uh, sidelining, you're also a keynote speaker at a lot of events nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. how, as, as a recruiter, how'd you get into keynote speaking? I, you know what? I've only been doing this for two and a half years and I think I've done 38 gigs already. So uh, I don't know. I just thought uh, if somebody called me up for one and then it just went like wildfire, you know, they see me at these events and they're like, holy cow. And, and it's so many different topics. I mean, just, I think the biggest thing is though, just uh, put yourself out there. If there's a, uh, if there's an opportunity for something, go for it. The first three, um, no money at all. No money at all. I just went for free. I said, dude, did you pay for my airfare, my food and my drinks? I'm there. So guess what? And then after you do a stellar appointment, they're like, holy cow, you're fresh to the industry. We love this. And then you know how people talk. And then before you know it, you're, you're everywhere. Staffing world, SIA and all that good stuff, you know? And, and I love everybody. I don't think any speaker is bad because they all have good content. What makes me different is my, I believe in my content, they believe in ours. We take a little bit from each other. We're all rock stars in the end. So if That's you're awesome. starting out at, in this, I would definitely push yourself out there, man. Push yourself out there. Put your name out there as you're a speaker on LinkedIn. Even if it's a college, like a community college, man. Or a high school, you know, go to your old high school and speak. That starts it. Okay. Good, good to know. For, I know there's a few listeners that have like thought about doing a speaking event. So there you go. The, the secret of the shark. It is. And then you know what? It's a hype too. When you get up on that stage, there's no fear, man. There's no fear, man. You're just like, 
all you see is a sea of happy people and you're just, just pumping and enjoying it, you know, but bring your own, bring your own style. You know, don't bring my style, don't bring Ben's style, bring your own style. And, and the rest will be history. You'll, you'll see so many different people reaching out to you for speaking gigs. Well, awesome. Well, before we jump to the next part of the podcast, is there anything else you want to share? No, I think we covered a lot on recruiting. I mean, if anybody needs help, you know who to call. Boom, I'm ready, man. I, I'm ready for the next uh, challenge and assignment, man. I'll be there. Oh, actually, actually recruit, re, re, before we jump into the quick fire questions, Recruiter TV, what is the vision of that? Okay, so um, there's something coming up. I'm not going to say a lot about it, but in 2024, there's going to be something that's going to rock the staffing world. I have um, probably about seven uh, people going to be involved in this. Maybe yourself, if you like, but it's going to be something that's going to be pretty badass. All I can say is it's something from the past that we're going to bring up to the future. And it's going to be awesome for the recruiting staff and industry. It's going to be something we've never seen before. No, it's on another podcast, but it's something in the media world. That's all I have to say. All right. And if you want to keep track of this and keep, uh, keep an eye on this, make sure to follow the Staffing Shark. All right. Ready for the quick fire questions? You got it, brother. What advice would you give to a brand new recruiter that's just getting started hey, we'll this year in 24? All right. I definitely get a mentor. Seriously, get somebody that's in the industry that you really respect and stuff like that. You know, you can reach out to me, I'm sure yourself, and uh, just learn from them. Ask questions. Your first year, ask. Everybody will give you all the answers, man. We love everybody. Awesome. And for the, what about the experience recruiters? Like, we'll say somebody like myself, almost two decades in this space. What would you say to these recruiters to continue to see success? I think um, adapt with the situation um, and learn from other people. We don't know everything. I mean, I don't know everything. I'm sure you don't either. You know, I, I learn from everybody. I take a little bit from everybody and then I put it in my ocean and swim away with it. So <laughs> it's always going to be the dark theories, you know that. But no, that's seriously, at the end of the day, it's all about just having fun with it. But yeah, learn from, I'm always learning. You know, you're learning all the time too. Gary B, if it's, you know, whoever it is, learn from all. I mean, one of the, my favorite things about this podcast is going back and editing and like re, re-listening to like the, the talk that I had with somebody, I'm like, oh, yeah, I missed that part when I was, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on you, but going back, I'm actually re-listening to everything again. And it's like, oh, I missed that. Like, oh my God, that's such a great tip. <laughs> yeah. So has there been a book that's had a huge impact on your own personal career? I brought it out, man. Here it is. T12. Okay. Got it. If you get a chance, read it. It's only about a hundred pages long. I'm telling you, it's good. That on the back tells you all about it right there. Boom. That extra degree will take you to the next level because at 212, water boils, steam, the steam will roll you right into the next level. I'm telling you, it's, it's, this book is so inspirational and I've, I've probably read about four times a year. So uh, get a chance, man, that one extra degree, take you to the next level, 100%. Awesome. What's your thoughts about artificial intelligence and the future of recruiting? Brilliant. Oh, righty. Here we go on this. AI. AI. Can I just say that that's, like I should get a tattoo AI. I, I think every five minutes, you know that in emails, everything's AI, everything. I mean, you know, even if you're a job more now, you're AI, you know, everything's AI. I think, I think the shark should just be AI too, right? What the hell, you know? You might as well put that on your podcast, you know, podcast at the input AI, but no, all joking aside, um, AI, it's incredible. So there's two different AIs. I always say there's artificial intelligence, right? And there's actual interaction. You got to put it both together. The actual interactions you get on the phone and making the phone calls is still being a human. Mm -hmm. And the artificial, the, AI, the other AI is, you know, what we hear about all the time. But I think we have to embrace it. And I mean, ChatGPT, all that good stuff. Yes, I love it. I mean, it's, it's great for the industry. Um, but you have to keep your balance. I think right now in the industry, I'm going to be honest with you, um, a lot of people are confused. These staffing firms, are, they don't know which one to pick. There's so much coming at them. You know, they've got these consultants just throwing stuff at them so they can get commission. Be very careful. You don't need it all. I mean, three years ago, we had the tech stack. You don't even hear about tech stack anymore, do you? You know, like, it's faded away, right? It's like, shit, okay. Now it's AI. So I just say embrace it. Get the key ones, ChatGPT. Use ChatGPT the right way. There's so much more than just putting it for a job descriptions or other stuff. You know that. You, you talk about it all the time. There's so many other avenues out there. There's so many other AI ones too. I can... I'll shoot you a couple that I, I prefer, but there's, there's so many AI cheat sheets you can grab. Grab the ones that you feel like are a fit for you. Don't follow the, 
I don't like to follow everybody else's. They're like, oh, this is the great stuff. I like that that sleeper. It's like brand new that I can rock out with, you know, praise them. So just keep your eyes open for that. I think it's going to be embrace everything. I think staffing is so quick these days. It's amazing. I mean, everything's on the cell phone. I tell everybody, you better have a white label app right now. Seriously. I mean, if you don't, you're in trouble. And for the listeners, what's a white label app? Oh, that's just an app, like just a Planet Fitness app. White label app has, goes right to your website or whatever thing you have. They click on it, boom. So the logo's on everything like that. You know, you got your Planet Fitness, you got whatever, you do Netflix, and then you got this, boom. So they see it all the time. Their friends can see it, goes right to you. They can apply for the job just like that on your phone. They don't have to use any computer, nothing like that. And stop the three steps on the, the onboarding. One step does it all. Like Eminem says, you got one shot at that candidate. Don't mess it up. So while what, what we're talking about tech, do you actually have a favorite rec tech tool that you use? Um, I like Converse. Outside of chat GPT. Converse AI is my baby. I love Converse AI. The voice AI, I tell you what, that is the wave of the future. I'm doing a webinar with them uh, in about three weeks. They are amazing. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's uh, the voice AI, 15-minute conversation. They can scrub your database. I mean, two o'clock in the morning, they can talk about it. You know, you get the, you get the voice, you get the script. It's pretty damn close to almost a human being now. And uh, I think that's the wave of the future. I mean, because, you know, we can't be on our phones 24 seven, three o'clock in the morning. People are looking for jobs at three o'clock because half the people can't sleep anymore, right? I mean, I got friends that look for jobs at 2 a.m. There's, I get emails. I don't know about you, Ben. I get emails at like three o'clock in the morning from people trying to sell me shit. I'm like, <laughs> that's awesome. It, it, it is, but that's, that's the way it is. But then a converse AI, you get a chance. The voice AI, I think that's going to rock the world. Probably one of the number one tech things for 2024. Cool. Awesome. Well, looking at your own story, uh, staffing shark, what do you think has been a big part of your own personal success? I think the biggest thing is just me being me, me being me, always just being upbeat. Um, success is having fulfillment every day. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a, a thing out of uh, Tony Robbins. Seriously, it is fulfillment. Every day when I leave the office or at my home, I had a fulfillment that day when I go to bed. And I think that's the thing is you never lose a contract. You never lose a candidate. You just didn't get them in the end. If you didn't ink it up, you didn't lose anything. You're still a chance. So I think that's the way we have to think. Okay. And like, you're extremely authentic. You're full of energy. All these things. Let's go backwards like 12, 15 years when you were working in the, you know, in the system. Were you the, uh, this way then? Or did you learn to become this now? I think uh, college got me this way. Actually, I was quiet in high school, believe it or not. I was a late bloomer, quiet as can be. But after I went to college, um, no. When I was in the, uh, in the probation, I felt like there was something else I needed to do. What, it, was a, it was a job. Does that make sense? It wasn't a lifestyle. Okay. And, you know, and then when I broke out and got into staffing, I always wanted to get into Maybe I, after about five years in, in probation, I always said, how do you? How do you start looking at resumes and stuff? But it's hard to get in because people like, you got to know somebody or something like that. And then I had the, the call that day. So I'm so blessed where I'm at right now. Seriously, I, I love it. I mean, this is so exciting to be on your show and everything else. And what we're going to do in 2024, you know, everybody together, it's going to be awesome. You know, 2024 is the year that we grow together. More at 24. That's my slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Well, and this is going to be, I'm going to ask this question twice. Yeah. So. I'm going to ask the recruiting side first, and then we'll ask for farther back. Everything that you know now, you could have a beer with yourself at the very beginning of your recruiting career. What would you tell yourself? Um, I think I would never, I, I thought, I, well, let me see. You know what? I would never expect to be where I'm at right now. I think that I, I picked myself sometimes and say, wow, I mean, I, in the last 10 years, I, I knew I wanted this dream. Did I know how long it was going to take? I didn't know it was going to take this only 10 years. I mean, seriously, it's to my level. It's, I just love it. No, seriously. So starting day one, I just want to be the best. I think that's what it was when I went to New York and I go, I want to be the best recruiter in, in the, you know, I'm very competitive and I just want to be the best. That's it. And then throughout the years going to staffing firms where you learn the wrongs and then you learn the rights and makes me the best uh, that I can be right now because I've, I've seen a lot of, we'll mention names and we all work for staffing firms where it's like, wow, I can't believe we're doing this. You know? <laughs> awesome. 
Well, and same, same question, like, you know, post-college, you know, maybe before you started working for the probation system or maybe while you were in the probation system, everything that you know now, you, had to be, you have to be with yourself. What would you tell yourself? I, I was, I just would tell myself, you know what? Embrace every day to the fullest. I mean, seriously, I have no regrets. And, and I think that's the biggest thing I tell everybody. You know, we're, we're on this path together. The reason we connect and anything like that, I, I think the biggest thing that we all have to realize at the end of the day that, you know, we're here for a short term. So just enjoy it. Embrace the staff and embrace the recruiting. That's about it. I mean, seriously, at the end of the day, if I had to sit down and drink a beer and look at the vision, my vision is right where I'm at right now. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, before I let you go, is there anything else you want to share with the listeners? I think the big thing I can tell anybody out there in the staff in the recruiting industry is to love what you do. There is going to be stress, but you can push that away. Just remember at the end of the day, we're all here to support each other. That's the thing. We have a family here. Got myself, reach out to me anytime you want. You know, you, you got my number. I, I just posted it on LinkedIn just now. So it's out there for everybody to see again. But at the end of the day, I think that's the biggest thing that I can tell anybody in the industry is we're all here to grow together. We're not going to lose. We're not going to win. We're just going to be growing together. Oh, I got one last question before I let you go. Yeah. A lot of us fall into recruiting. And you're talking about loving what you do, like loving recruiting. I personally had to learn how to love recruiting. How does somebody out there learn to love this industry? Good question. So I think that for you to learn to love it, you got to embrace it. You got to embrace everything about it the goods, the bads, the people yelling at you, you know, every day is a different day. And that is something that you have to embrace. I mean, it's, it's like a wave. We call it, you know, the staffing wave. It's going to be a wave every day, up and down. But that roller coaster ride is so fun. It is. At the end of the day, it's going to go high again. So I think at the end of the day, I, yeah, you have to embrace everything that we talk about, you know, and every can, every moment, you know, and don't beat yourself up. Don't look in the mirror and say, I'm in a funk because once you get in that, Thing. guess what everything goes downhill have other people to pick you up and that's what I, i'm about is all picking people up all the time awesome well richard thank you so much and for the listeners um definitely make sure to follow the staffing shark whether it's on facebook or linkedin and man this guy has got some energy and uh, it's probably one of the reasons why everybody keeps on calling him back to be a keynote speaker is because of the energy the love the, and everything that he gives back to the, to the community. And another, he's one of the great examples of out there, how to build content and how to build content that actually has the actual ROI. So thank you guys for listening and uh, let's grow together. What was, what was your quote for 2024? More in 24. More in 24. All right. Thank you guys. Let's go. Let's make this happen. You got it.